Hey Lakeway, Pastor Mike here with a little bit of midweek motivation for you. Not in my office, as you can tell. I'm actually in Colorado with Sandra. We're in a place called Fraser, enjoying a little bit of time off. But I still wanted to do my midweek motivation for you. I want to share with you one of the verses that's uh, it's a memory verse for me, but it's, it's more than that. It's a verse that has become part of my prayer life. It's Psalms 90 verse 12. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Now, Psalm 90 is kind of an interesting psalm. It is a psalm of Moses. Most of the psalms are psalms from David. So this one is really old because Moses predates David by quite a bit. And it's a really interesting psalm because it contrasts the eternal perspective of the Lord with time as we experience it as humans. But there's actually more to it than that. There's a twist in this psalm that we would do well to learn from. Now, if you remember, Moses was leading the Israelites during one of the most challenging times in their history. They had been in slavery in Egypt for about 400 years, a little over 400 years, and then the Lord frees them from that oppression. They march out of Egypt after witnessing a series of absolutely terrifying plagues, and all of these plagues affect the Egyptians, but they don't affect the Hebrews. As they leave, the Lord puts it on the hearts of the Egyptians to allow the Israelites to plunder them. So these people that were slaves now get up and they're, they're, they're marching out of Egypt and they're carrying with them gold, silver, uh, valuable cloth, precious metals, everything. I mean, it would have been quite a scene to see. So, and then God goes before them and God goes behind them. He leads them with a pillar of cloud by the day and a pillar of fire at night. Now, after they've left, we all know the story. The Egyptians change their mind. They start to chase them down and the Israelites come to the Red Sea. And now all of a sudden it seems like they're trapped, but God parts the Red Sea. They cross over the sea on dry land. After they're on the other side, the Egyptians try the same thing. They get in the middle and all of the water uh, comes back and, and drowns them. All of the while, the Lord is telling them, I've got a land for you. I promise to your forefather Abraham, it is a land of plenty. It is a land flowing with milk and honey. It is the land that I have promised to you. And all you've got to do is go take it. I am with you. I will be your strength. I will be your sword. I would be your shield. Now, if you had seen God do all of those incredible things, those plagues that didn't affect you affected everybody else, parted the sea, the, the fire in the, in the day, the smoke at night, and the Egyptians being vanquished, and you're hearing him say, I've got this wonderful land for you. How would you feel? I mean, honestly, I think I'd be like, yay, God. Oh, you are our God. But they didn't. They didn't trust God. In fact, they even rejected God. Even after seeing all that he had done, they get to the promised land. They look at the promised land. God's already told them, I'm going to go ahead. They say, nah, well, I don't think we can do it. And what's worse, instead of being grateful, they were hateful toward the Lord. How would you feel if you were God? So he allows them to suffer the consequences of their distrust. And for 40 years, they wander in the wilderness. Their days were long, they were arduous, and they were filled with misery. And then this psalm that Moses wrote is a plea to the eternal Lord for mercy. And the middle of the psalm goes like this, in verses 8, 9, and 10, 8 to 12, actually. You have set our iniquities before you. In other words, you, you're not forgetting what we've done, God. Our secret sins are in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Our days may come to 70 years or 80, if our strength endures, yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger, your wrath is as great as the fear that is your due. Teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And I love that cry from Moses, you know, teach us, Lord, teach us. That, that the days belong to you, that each day is precious. 
Show us that we may gain wisdom, that we don't waste our days. You know, I like to personalize scripture. And like I say, this one is, is part of my prayer life. So, you know, I think to, for me, what does it mean for the Lord to teach me or to teach you to number our days, to number your days? What does that look like in our lives? I, you know, I'd like you to think about that. For me, it would look like this. Teach me not to take your blessings for granted. Teach me to be grateful. Teach me not to forsake your ways. Teach me not to waste my days on trivial pursuits. I don't want to fall into the wrath of the Lord where he leaves me to my own ways. Where my days are long, arduous, and filled with meaningless toil and purposeless. What does it mean for us to gain a heart of wisdom? Now think about that. For me, it means to order my day around the Lord's plan for me, not mine. To trust that his plan for the day is better than mine. And then here's how the psalm ends. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. What a great prayer. You order our day, Lord. May we and our children serve you and know your wonders, that we wouldn't wander away from your ways all the days of our lives. You know, I want to know the blessings of the Lord every day, to be in his will every day. Teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. I want my days to be joysome not toilsome. What about you? Hey, let's pray. Father, we just give you thanks. You are such a gracious God. You're a God who loves his people, who goes before his people, is behind his people. And Father, when we order our lives around you, our lives are orderly. Our lives are filled with the fruit of the Spirit. So Father, I pray for me and I pray for each one of us, just as Moses prayed, and it's a collective prayer. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, stay connected. This Sunday, we're going to talk about the second part of the sermon that I preached on last Sunday. That was about love. This Sunday is about the light. So looking forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye.